All right, Dominic fight, Dominic fight, Dominic fight. We can open some Dom fight. We can open a little Dom fight. I'm going to open the beat. Because Dom will get mad if I start showing his vocals by itself. <laughs> there it is. That's the beat. All right, cool. Let me find it. Okay, boom, found it. Dominic Fike, phone numbers. It's not really that interesting to keep it funky. Let me tell you why. The guitar on it is played by Jared Scharf, who's like my good homie. He plays in a ton of shit. He gave me this loop that he had played on this little tiny guitar. So that's the main thing with the Dominic Fike shit. If you take an acoustic guitar and you pitch it up, it's not gonna sound the same. If you stretch it, it's not gonna sound the same. Bro has... A, like a guitar that's actually really short and really small and it's almost like ukulele size and he ba basically just like plays like he obviously is a great player he plays on snl he's an unbelievable player but anything he plays on this little guitar just has that kind of cute ukulele sound even though it is a guitar for real oh there's a lot of donations shout out to frick my mom <laughs> anything jared plays in this little baby guitar sounds so good and it has like a, almost like it's a shortened neck but it's a pretty long neck and like a really small body if you want to do something similar to this and you want to get guitar tones that are cool or a little different this and that two things i can highly recommend to you are one buying shitty weird guitars and when i say shitty i mean cheap and shitty buy a little mexican toy kids guitar buy a little you know what i mean like a toy guitar you would buy for a little kid at a toy store and try to get it in tune or close or whatever and just play shit on it and it'll sound way different than if you played something on a guitar i got six seven guitars here i could never get this sound ever and on top of that jared's a great player I'm, i went to berkeley for guitar i've been playing guitar my whole life i still know when to call on someone to play on a tune like if I'm in the studio with an artist, I'm not going to sit there and wait and go, yo, Jerry, can you send me some chords and that? I'm going to sit there and I'll play guitar with somebody. But if I have somebody for a tune, I have some in mind, I need a really cool vibe, like I'm going to call guitar players that I know. And that's a big part of producing is like knowing what your strengths are. Can you do everything yourself? Yes. Is anyone going to give you a pat on the back? No. It's a, That's some Rick Rubin shit. I'm pretty sure he said that in many places, but that's something he told me. He's like, no one is going to give you a pat on the back because you engineered it and you played all the instruments and you wrote all the melodies and you didn't use loops and there's no splice in it. No one gives a fuck. People care if it's a good song. So when it comes to like having an unbelievable guitar part, it's going to shock somebody like Dom. Dom plays guitar. We could sit here and play and find something, but I went through some shit that Jared had sent me and it just gave a vibe instantly. So the initial loop is just this thing Jared sent. It's got a bunch of RC20 on it. If you want to see what the setting is, I'll move it over. It, I use the, the Vinyl 1 preset. always pops up on mine first, but I fuck with it. So it's not this preset. So if, this is what I have it set to. But notice, like I always talk about in the intro, super mono. And then this guitar over here, when you get to the... It's got a Puig. I don't know why I put a compressor on it, but I did. This has no RC20. It's not like mono at all you know what i mean like um yeah so this 
it guitar comes in really wide and really big. You hear all the noise and shit? It's through an iPhone. So Jared played that guitar, went on his fucking phone, and played guitar right in front of the fucking voice memo, and that's what it is. It gives it a cool thing. Instagram makes shit sound cool, you know what I mean? Like, certain things give a crazy vibe. Like, when you go from this really mono guitar in the intro, also down an octave, see right there, the whole, everything's down one, so this is down 13. It's down an octave in the intro and it's really mono. Someone said they want the preset again. Here's what my, my RC20 is set to. Take a fucking picture. And then once it comes out of that mono shit, it goes up an octave and it gets really wide. And it's recorded on a iPhone. So there's all kinds of noise. There's a little bit of room noise. There's finger noise. Da -da -da. That felt good. It made it feel raw. Dom singing with just one vocal it made it feel like it was him sitting there playing it. You know what I mean? Like, so these are all little tips already. Use a piece of shit guitar. Find a cheap ass tiny guitar, ukulele, whatever. Figure out something cool on it. Record it on a fucking iPhone. And then already down an octave with a filter on it. And then open like normally. Then you have two different pieces to go back and forth between. In my intro, yes, I have seagulls. I also have these little weird cat call things. They're so low. Oh, they fade. But this is what they sound like loud. This is panned hard right. And then this one's panned hard left. But they're different loops. I don't fucking know what I was doing. It just sounds cool, I guess. It gives it ambiance. When the intro ends, though... Those little claps kind of like, you see how the, it's like ambiance that kind of builds in the intro, but you start feeling a clap coming in. Hey. So when those come in, I don't know, it kind of like builds to them type shit. But yeah, these are just a bunch of live claps put together. One's a little left and one's just center. Look what we're doing here. It's literally fucking claps with a uh, shitty guitar recorded through an iPhone. Dom made it. You know what I mean? But it still sounds cool. And if that, I'll tell you this much. If that guitar you recorded right into your computer or you recorded on a microphone and it was super, super, super clean, this song wouldn't be interesting to you. It's the fact that it's recorded through an iPhone and it sounds kind of shitty and maybe that's why I put a compressor on it. Maybe it sounded thin. But it's the fact that it feels kind of like shitty and raw that with the live claps makes it feel super real. You know what I mean? And so then I played a bass line. It's so basically that that just continues. That ambiance comes out. I don't know what is this thing. Some little medicine shaker I cut up. Add another snare. I must have just got some medicine pack at the time. I did this little bass line. Now, doesn't that sound kind of real? Did you hear like the finger noise? The, I, you, I talked about this bass the other day. I used to use this bass on everything all the time. Contact Rickenbacker. I used to use Logic, by the way. I used to use Free Loops. I've used fucking everything. Ableton makes shit go faster. That's why I use it. But yeah, I use this bass a lot. This is the setting I used for this one was Tweed Man. I might have fucked with the cabinet shit or this shit a little bit. Sometimes I touch this shit over here. But it's basically just that. And then in the MIDI, shit you can do to make it way more interesting. So you see like these up here. These are finger noise. Like this is, that's all shit that literally just feels a little more realistic because if you had to go from this note to this note on a bass, your finger would slide across the string. It's not ever going to sound real, real, but it sounds just like a little more realistic when you get that little bit of finger noise in there. And that's been already like the vibe of the whole song. It's like 
the guitar has some noise in it. So now that I'm doing this fake ass bass, I wanna put something to make it feel a little realistic, you know? Did a hat there. So if you, if you guys need help with this pattern, just let me know. I guess there's one low one. Whoa, Kenny! Jesus, that was right in time. <laughs> really complicated hat. But notice when the drums first come in, the hat is halftime. And then whenever the beat builds up, a bunch of shit comes in and it changes from halftime to... Yeah, adding drums is gonna give it energy, but what gives the beat more energy than anything else in the verse is when that hat comes in double time. Because the whole intro, it's been... Think about, like, pick up the phone. Boom. Boom. And then... Like, as soon as they get into the verse, the hat goes double time. And that's what gives the verses the energy. But when it comes back to pick up the phone... It gets, like, half time again. Going back and forth in your beats between... Half time with the hats and full time is like a big thing to change the energy and everything else in the beat can pretty much stay the fucking same. You know what I'm saying? Like, so simple claps, a couple little added snares, but we keep adding things as we're going. The first four, we added that clap. The next four, we added a fucking hat with a snare, with, with a shaker. Then from there, I start adding snares, really live rims to keep everything live sounding. Some Whoa, kind of loop kidding. under everything. Kicks. But notice there's a live kick. See how that feels super real? And then under the live kick, I got a fucking OG Parker kick. If you want to see what kicks or what. OG Parker kick thought. Jazz drums kick kit floor. Whatever the fuck that is. Go steal that sauce. But basically, it's a live kick with the punchy kick so now all my drums if you if we take all the, like the the melodic shit out get the bass out hold on. but you feel how live it feels like It don't feel super like trappy and shit. You know what I mean? Like even if I'll take the hat out. Just the little ghost hats. But like there's live uh symbols. There's live rims on top of like the the claps. There's live uh clap loops. There's a live sounding kick on top of my punchy kick. We're doing shit to like the hat is like some normal hat you would use in a fucking eternal take beat. But besides that, using the live bass, using all those sounds, this and that, on top of the guitar, it just, it still punches. I still got a hard bass line. I still got a hard kick, a hard snare. But everything just has a little bit of room noise to it. And all that shit starts mixing together and it just feels like very live. You know what I mean? So in this middle part, we go back to what we did in the intro. You take that main guitar loop, you bring it down an octave, you put it into a fucking filter, make it mono, or just make it different from the other thing you're doing. So let's say this one was really in the middle and mono, maybe make this really wide. But in this case, this was super big. So we're gonna make this part just feel different. It doesn't have to be opposites. Like you just want there to be differences in the textures and shit that you're hearing. So basically we go back to this thing we did in the intro. The only difference is from the intro I did a, another instance of that bass I was using, and this bass has a filter on it, probably to be a see, mono, very similar to this. It's probably the same setting, honestly. Put that same RC20 that the intro had on it. So I did a bass line up an octave whenever my sample goes down an octave, but they're both in the same filter. And then I made the bass line a little more complicated because we're dropping all the drums out, so you want to just keep... The ant, like you want to keep the momentum up just a little bit whenever shit's fucked up, like whenever shit gets quiet, you know. Back to inversions of that same shit, but really all I start doing 
from here on out is maybe I'll do a little couple different things in the bass as we go and then drum drops. So notice when you come back to the drums, there's no snare. That second snare feels twice as good. That's why we were saying about like, you basically just gotta build this strong platform and then when you get to your second verse, you can put the shit that you did in the first verse. It doesn't make it boring, but make some variations. Do a couple different notes, do a couple different drum things. And like we were talking about the other day, when you drop the beat out, the next time the beat comes in is twice as impactful. So say like you're right here and you why you like if you drop that piece right there, it's gonna make it so much harder when Dom comes back in. It's the same idea when you drop drums. Drop the hi hat at the end of four bars. Drop the like the last snare. Drop the first snare. Drop had the first kick hit and then have no kicks for a while and then have the kick come back in. Like doing little shit like that later in the beat keeps your same boring pattern interesting forever because they never know when it's going to go away or when someone's going to come back in or when it's just the hi-hat and the clap or it's just the kick and the clap or it's just the kick and the hi-hat like you got to give it to them with everything all together pretty early in the beat most times so they know what's going to happen but when you're in the second verse when you're in the outro when you're in uh, like second half of the first verse drum drops are what keep it interesting <laughs> Drop this snare again. See, I did a kick thing there that I don't do anywhere else in the beat, just to. Just... And then obviously no drums at the end of that. Those little drum drops are giving the energy. You know what I mean? Those are giving the variance. Those are the things that feel different to the listener and to the artist writing to it than the first verse that makes them want to like keep going in. You know what I'm saying? One thing I will say is Dom is a goat at like stacking vocals. He has an unbelievable voice. He doesn't have a reason to do this, but sometimes when people are like nervous about the first vocal they did or not sure that they have the main vocal how they want it they'll add, they'll do the main vocal exactly how it is like four times and then all of a sudden you kind of have this like really strong thing that the four vocals give you that the one vocal can't give you like justin timberlake would record every one of his main vocals four times so whenever you hear his voice you're hearing four of his voice they don't have to be perfect but when they're really close and there's one that's the loudest and three that are just a little quieter than that. And they're all doing exactly the same thing. That's when it starts to build this different kind of tone. Sometimes you want one vocal, you know what I mean? But please talk about the little melodic things that come in the background. Oh, I didn't talk about that, did I? One more thing on phone numbers beat. This is a freeze. So what did I do? It's a contact. So, unfreeze. Okay, so this shit is a, I'm, I'm thinking it's Kinetic Toys. Kinetic Toys, this is some fire shit in Native Instruments. It, it's all different like weird toys. So I guess I was using Record Player Wind Up 1. By the way, all this shit is fucking so random and just moves all over the place and nothing says anything. I guess it kind of says down here what it does but it's fucking random. So when you start moving these little things, everything changes. I have no idea what I did. There's definitely some bends. Let's see if I can see the bends. Yeah. And I'm obviously just doing that with the fucking the pitch bend shit on the MIDI. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't draw those in. You can see there's like a million little cue points. I definitely just bended it on the keyboard, but... Kinetic Toys, I gave you the preset, showed you how I fucking did it. The MIDI's really easy. Just two phrases that are similar, one has a different ending. Hard. Yeah, just in that one spot adds a lot though. What is this one stupid little perk? Hard. <laughs> Okay, phone numbers. We did it. 